Okay, so in this week's Famer Magician training, we are yet again taking a look at something that natively does not look possible, but will twist and turn the currently available features inside of Famer to somehow make it work. Let me quickly show you what we're gonna do. As you can see, I have a recreation of an effect. Um, let me show you first of all the original um, post. So as you can see, Lewis posted this effect uh, on the, from the telescope website. And what I really enjoyed is how these images around are kind of like, you know, coming closer to us, but in, in like a 3D space. Uh, so you can see how the images are moving um, all around. And, you know, in Framer, we have a property called depth. And basically depth is moving elements along the Z axis. So this is what we would need to animate with scroll transform. However, if you open Framer and you go into your project and you select an image, scroll transform is applied on the right, you can see that you cannot really have depth transform. You can change opacity, scale, rotation, skew offset, but there is no depth. So in this little, or with this little puzzle, uh, we're gonna have a really nice exercise to like think about how can we get a depth transform right here uh, so we can recreate that effect. So what I recommend to you is go ahead, try it uh, to like, you know, just kind of think about it and, and try coming up with something yourself because that's gonna, you know, make you like a better designer, framer, developer, and you're gonna improve your problem solving skills. However, if you cannot figure it out or if you wanna see my solution, stick around until the end of the video and find out. So my name is Nandi, this is Framer University, and let's get started. So first of all, what I want to say is that you're going to find a link in the description uh, where you can remix this whole project. So basically I recreated the whole thing if you search for, but you can also just search it, but it's going to be in the description. So immersive scroll zoom animation, um, you can remix this whole like project with like this, like, you know, whole effect. So you can see how it's created if you want to take a look within, but now we're going to like mainly focusing on these images that are coming closer to us because in the process of recreating this, you know, I was thinking, how can I recreate this? Because I need depth. We don't have depth. And yeah, first of all, I, you know, I, I just checked, you know, what happens if we just simply apply scale to these images? So, because, you know, they are kind of scaling up, they are, you know, getting larger and larger. So you might think that it's just a simple scale. But if I apply scale to this image right here, so scroll transform on the right, and the from state is one opacity, one scale, and the two state is, let's say, two scale. So we're gonna be scaling this up uh, as we scroll down, but as you can see, it's not really the effect that we're looking for because in a real 3D space, uh, if something is coming closer to us, then it's, in this case, it would kind of be also moving to the right side. So on the correct setup, we have a different page here. On the correct setup, you can focus on only this image and you can see that it's not only scaling up, it's also moving to the right side. So, you know, how can we recreate this real, like, um, I don't know, 3D space? Um, and also you can see, by the way, that if we were to scale these images, for example, this, this, and all of the images, like we wouldn't have this varying um, gap between the images as they are coming closer to us and they are like further away from uh, uh, each other a little bit. And, you know, this gap is always increasing and increasing. This wouldn't be the case if we were just, um, you know, scaling them up. All the, you know, gaps between uh, would remain the same and it wouldn't have the same, like, immersive 3D uh, sort of experience. So we really need to utilize depth in this case. But, you know, we don't really have that on the scroll transform panel. Before we do anything else uh, of like figuring out how this is done, let me just tell you one more thing because, you know, if you're a beginner with framework or something like that, you might not even understand what is the basic setup of this, of this effect. So let me just quickly run through that. If you already know this, you can feel free to uh, skip to the next chapter. But if you're a beginner, what you have to understand is that these uh, sort of scroll animation effects are created in a way that we create a sticky frame that we keep 
uh, at the top of the website as we scroll down. So we have a bunch of elements that are kept within the viewport and we can apply scroll transforms to those elements to move them around while we're scrolling. So you can see that, for example, I start scrolling down, but the by real people is also staying here. Uh, these images are also not like scrolling out uh, of the view. They are like being transformed and stuff like that, but still they are kept within the viewport. And uh, when, once, we, uh, once we're done with this effect, everything just scrolls away. So this is again created with a sticky uh, frame. So you can see the basic structure here. We have a main container. Within that we have a scroll animation container. This is by the way, a long, long frame. In this case, 4,400 pixels. This defines the length of the sticky effect because within we have a frame which is on the top of this scroll animation container, uh, which is set to fill with 100 VH, means, meaning that it will always take up 100% of the given viewport. And this is set to sticky position in the top right, which basically means that you know it's gonna stay uh, in the viewport as we scroll down, as you can see, it just stays in the viewport and just applies the the scroll animation to the, to the element that is within the sticky bar. You might ask, okay, how is the scroll animation is being applied? Well, we can utilize the scrolling that happens uh, in the background because even though we have a sticky frame, everything else that we might put here, so let's just create a frame here. I'm gonna uh, quickly make sure that we can also see the color. So you can see that all the other frames that are not sticky, they're still scrolling away. And we utilize those elements to, to trigger the, uh, the scroll transform because what we can do is we can simply select the trigger frame that we place below the sticky and on the right panel we apply a scroll section to it. Uh, it's named images zoom in this case. So now if I apply a scroll transform to any element, I can trigger the scroll transform with that scroll section. So as this uh, pink colored frame is scrolling into the view, we're keeping the element sticky in the view, but we are all setting the transform uh, that we define on the scroll transform. And once we uh, once we add, like reach the end of the scroll animation container, which is 4,400 pixels, everything is gonna scroll away. One extra thing that you have to keep in mind, sticky positioning will only work, so this sticky will only be really sticky if the all the parent frames, meaning scroll animation container main, and the desktop are all set to overflow visible. So that's just a little, like um, just a quick walkthrough of the basics of this effect. But now let's really think about how can we get depth on this panel? Well, I have to admit, we, we, we can actually get depth here, but we can, we can be a little bit smart about these structuring to make sure that we're actually transforming depth when we are tweaking one of these properties. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the scale back to one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap this uh, this image in another frame. So I'm just gonna simply, I'm, I'm also gonna remove the scroll transform uh, from this. So I'm gonna just right click and add a frame, really easy. And this frame will have overflow visible. So if this frame, let's say this image within, is moving to the left, right, uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna stay visible. If this frame were overflow hidden, and as I move this, like you can see, it's not really uh, visible. So this is really important. We can just name this like image wrapper. And what we're doing with this image wrapper, it's really interesting. Uh, we are just transforming it. So we're adding a transform in the right panel. It's gonna be a rotation 3D, and we're gonna do a, 90 degree rotation along the Y axis. So this is what I'm gonna do, like this, 90 degrees. It's, it's, you're, you're, you might be confused that like 90 degrees, that basically means that we're seeing the edge, like we, we shouldn't see anything. The reason why we're still like kind of see the image is because the image is wrapped in an image wrap. So this is already part, this is also part of the basic setup that we have, which have which has preserved 3D and perspective. If we were to remove these, you can see we, we don't really see anything, like we see the real 90 degrees, but since we have the perspective and preserved 3D on the parent frame, 
uh, of this of this image. This basically means that this will um, put it in a 3D space. And you know, 3D space works in a way that it has perspective distortion. So as I'm moving this image to the right side, we are revealing more and more. And if we move it to the center, we're gonna see less and less. Um, so, you know, it's just how perspective distortion works in 3D. So, so yeah, don't be confused uh, with this. It, but it's overall for a great like 3D effect. It's really important uh, to have this perspective and preserve 3D on the on the parent frame because only then the uh, inner elements will be in the same 3D space. Uh, and by the way, if preserve 3D is no, then also it's not going to work. So preserve and perspective are both really important. If we decrease the perspective value, the perspective distortion will be much more intense. If we increase it, it's going to be less intense. So 1200 is a nice, um, nice uh, value that we can use. So all we did is we rotated the image wrapper 90 degrees. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the inner image back. So a Y rotation is added to the image within and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees, let's say. So now we're not really seeing this. We have to apply Preserve 3D to this image wrapper as well. So the 3D space is kept throughout. So the way 3D space works is that if we have multiple like wrappers, wrapper frames, you have to add Preserve 3D to each level to keep um, like keep bringing this 3D space to the inner elements because we have one frame that we define the 3D space with, which is the images wrap. We apply perspective and preserve 3D there. And on the wrapper frames, we also have to apply preserve 3D again. Perspective, we don't need that again. We, ju we just need it once on the main wrapper. And, but yeah, we, we have to uh, apply the preserve 3D on this wrapper if we want to put the image in the same 3D space as well. So I hope that makes sense. And so now that we have this, with this uh, tricky setup, what I can do is I can just simply transform this element along the X axis and hopefully it will start moving in the like closer to us. But let's try it. Maybe not. Uh, we're going to see. So I'm going to I'm going to select this image and on the right side, I'm going to apply a scroll transform and I'm just going to try it out right now. I'm going to select the two and I'll just start moving the X. And yeah, indeed, now it is moving along the Z axis. It's basically the same effect uh, as depth. Um, and yeah, uh, basically that's it. Uh, just for you uh, to uh, to like see, and let me just show it to you. If I duplicate this frame and I move it here, for example, and I don't have this like wrapper, or let's just say that we have this wrapper, but we don't have this like tricky like rotation setup. So we set the rotation here to zero and also in the image uh, with them. You can see that without this tricky setup, uh, this X is just a simple, you know, offset along the X axis. But what you have to understand is that with this tricky setup, we have basically rotated the axis of this frame. So now instead of X, meaning an X rotation, sorry, X offset, so left or right, we rotated this axis like this. And now it's pointing uh, to us and above uh, and away from us. So we basically transformed our X axis into a Z axis. I hope that makes sense again. By the way, if you, but I got a comment not so long ago when I was explaining something similar and they were like, what are these axes and stuff? Uh, you can literally just Google like, you know, 3D axis and you can just see it right here. like. Uh, this maybe helps you visualize it a little bit better. You know, this is X axis, uh, this is Y axis, and I don't really, yeah, this is, <laughs> this is already rotated, so it doesn't really make too much sense. Um, let me show you, this is what I mean, this right here. So X, Y, X left and right, Y top bottom, and Z is moving closer and further away from us. And in this case, we just rotate this uh, whole thing like this. And so X is not no longer pointing to the right, 
where it's po pointing uh, to us. So, um, so yeah, it, we, we basically transform it into a Z axis. So yeah, as you can see again here, without the tricky setup, we have an X offset with this, the X now means basically depth. So again, what we had to do in order to reach this point is we had to uh, like wrap it in an image wrapper, rotate that 90 degrees. And basically with this, this is, this is the rotation that rotates the X axis and points it towards us. And, you know, without the extra like rotation on the image, this wouldn't look great because, okay, like now uh, the parent is rotated, but it still kind of moves along the along the x axis because like uh, the image is rotated. But we just counter the rotation, 90 degrees. We rotate it back, and there you go. Now we have the setup that we actually need. And you know, if you duplicate this frame a bunch of times, so like this image wrapper is gonna be duplicated a bunch of times. So you're gonna move it in all sorts of different directions. Um, let me just. Put it here as well then i don't know what is happening here i probably messed up something let me reload the project okay it still looks weird oh actually i i know why because we haven't really set up this scroll transform we just started playing around with it so we still have to add the section in view images zoom so it gets triggered when that scroll section scrolls into view the starting is opacity one scale one and then the two state is just an x offset uh, let's just offset. Oh, no skew. Thank you. Uh, maybe one, maybe minus 2000. So it's, oh, maybe, maybe that's a little bit too, too much. So minus 1000 might be enough. Um, so yeah, as you can see, this is nicely going to be uh, transformed. What you can do in order to create like a crazier 3D effect, what, what we did here with the, with the multiple images, is that we um, had a starting offset uh, of like different values that's why it has like a i don't know crazier 3d effect so for example what you can do is on this um, image here you might have from state and the x offset might be a little bit like i don't know like this so you can see it's coming from a like a further direction and um and yeah it basically has to cover the same distance but yeah if you're like placing them in a way that they are also kind of like overlapping that can, that can also create a, a great effect. So yeah, as you can see right here, even like this is getting a little bit closer to the other image. So yeah, overall, this just creates a great effect. And yeah, um, if you if you implement it on, on like a bunch of images, you can have something like this, which arguably looks really nice. So again, quick shout out to the telescope site for for the inspiration because again we recreated it from this website and again the link is in the description uh, you can remix this and you can play around with it and hopefully you know my goal with this video is to really turn you into a framer magician who can really like twist and turn f the features inside of framer in, in order to get something that yeah, uh, that might not be natively possible, but you know, actually it is possible, but you have to be a little bit more clever. So yeah, I really do hope that you were able to learn something from this video. And yeah, let me know in the comments if I should make more of these. And yeah, you also, if you have any questions, make sure to drop them down in the comments section. I'm gonna make sure to, to answer you guys. And yeah, also check out Framing the University. I have a bunch of resources, lessons, and stuff like that. So if you are building framework websites or you just start learning it, uh, I think it's going to be a great resource for you. So yeah, that's it for this video. Make sure to like it, subscribe for more, and I'm going to see you in the next one.